Carter. This is Demon FM. Hello and welcome back to Demon FM's coverage of the DSU elections live from De Montfort Students Union Level 1. We're going to continue with the debates now. We've got the Deputy President Education candidates. I'm going to introduce you. We've got Caitlin Bloom, Thomas Greaves, Mahad Falaj, and Alison Leggett. We do have a full group here. Make sure you get tweeting into Demon FM at Demon FM if you want to put any questions to any of the candidates. It can be a question for all, or it can be a question based on somebody's manifesto point and you want to question them about that. These are your elections. We're here with you until 2 o'clock, live on 107.5 at Demon FM. Just to let the candidates know. If you want to debate any answer that a candidate gives, you have the right to do so. Raise your hand and someone will come to you with a microphone. You have 30 seconds in which to put your debate to the candidate. The candidate you're then debating will have 30 seconds to answer. You are going to be given 30 seconds per question to have your answer, to give your answer to any of the questions. If at that time you are still talking, the microphone will be taken from your face and you'll be asked to shut up. It will make you look really silly. Okay, so we're going to go with three questions that we're going to post to all of you. And we're going to start, to my right, the Caitlin Bloom. How will you make sure that all 23,000 students are happy that the university is providing high academic standards? Students get involved in things like periodic reviews, which once every six years, validations, and of course you can always talk to your course rep. Short and sweet. Okay, uh, and the next person we're going to go to is uh, Thomas Greaves. I'll repeat the question for you. How will you make sure that all 23,000 students are happy that the university is providing high academic standards? Um, well, we need to get down there on the front lines and talk to students themselves and make sure that, that students get everything they need um, in order to perform um, at the highest academic standard, as well as using course reps and faculty reps to a much greater degree. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then over to Ali, Alison. How will you make sure that all 23,000 students are happy that the university is providing high academic standards? Once again, course reps and uh, faculty reps play a huge part in that. Uh, keeping us out there, keeping it known that we are there and we really want them to have the best that they can at uh, DMU. Okay, thank you. And finally to Mahad. How will you make sure that all 23,000 students are happy that the university is providing high academic standards? Uh, basically, go in, um, go out and talk. Give me a minute. Someone's phone's ringing. There was a second. Yeah, go, go out and talk. Basically, that's what I do. To go out and talk, talk to the students, ask what they want. And of course, course reps, they are there. That's their job. And that's what they do every day. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Any of the candidates got anything to add to anything they want to say or anything they want to debate with a fellow candidate? No problem. I'll be debating with all you all in a second. Remember to get your tweets in at Demon FM or text in 60300, starting with the word Demon. The next question, we're going to start with you, Mahad. One of the duties as Deputy President of Education is to step in as President if they are unable to meet their duties. If this were to happen, how will you ensure that both positions are kept at a sufficient standard? I would strongly work with the other exec teams to uh, distribute the workload and, of course, take up the lead as Deputy. As Deputy, I'm the second in command. And I'll take my role very seriously. Uh, yeah, and also work with the uh, union staff very closely and get my support from them as well. Okay. Uh, and Alison, the same question to you. One of the duties as Deputy President of Education is to step in as President if they are unable to meet their duties. If this were to happen, how will you ensure that both positions are kept at a sufficient standard? Uh, ensuring that my relationship with the President is as good as it possibly can be and really just keeping up with, with both sets of, of work and ensuring that... I'm doing the best I can for both. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Thomas, the question again. One of the duties as Deputy President of Education is to step in as President if they are unable to meet their duties. If this were to happen, how will you ensure that both positions are kept at a sufficient standard? Yeah, um, we're social students are standing a candidate for President and for Deputy President of Education. And the idea is that we can complement each other. I mean, the plan is to live together as well next year. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to know the role just by being around the president and so that if I do need to step in, then I'll have um, all the means I can, all the information that I need to get in. Um, we aren't just alone. We are an executive team and we need to work together. So we should be prepared to step in to, and help out with any role. Time. Thank you very much. Uh, and finally, Caitlin. One of the duties as Deputy President of Education is to step in as president if they are unable to meet their duties. If this were to happen, how will you ensure that both positions are kept at a sufficient standard? Uh, the president and the deputy work really closely throughout the whole year. Most of the time we end up in the same meetings. Um, but also we're an exec team, so it's really important the workload is spread across all five. There's no point in the deputy going off and doing something on their own and not telling the other exec officers. We have to share the load anyway. So if the president were to suddenly disappear, and I really hope they never do, um, both roles could be covered by the four remaining executives. 
Okay, and just to add to that point, last year uh, we were missing a Deputy President of Education. Um, do you think that if you were put in that position again, you will have the word I'm looking for, I can't say on radio, would you have the, uh, the know-how to take on the other positions um, and take on other responsibilities of the positions? Yes or no, quick yes or no answer. Caitlin, yes or no? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 100%. Yes. Yeah. That was nice and easy. Uh, in case you hadn't noticed, I was filling time there. Okay, and the final question for you. There are many overseas students at Timopoulos University all requiring different treatments. How are you going to ensure that they're getting the most out of their primary reason for them being here, their education? Uh, Thomas, we'll come to you first. Um, well, yeah, we do have a lot of um, links. DMU is really well linked to students outside the country. And the best way we can do that is to just use uh, things like social media and social networking to really um, keep in contact with them. Emails are just one level, but we can definitely use new mechanisms to keep in contact to make sure they're satisfied um, with everything they're doing. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then we'll go to Alison next. I know that we do have a very good support network here for international students, but I have become aware, uh, as of the, the, the time I've been here, that they are often quite separated from uh, students in this country, and I feel that they would actually benefit greatly from being integrated quicker into the community of, of all of DMU, rather than just their own specific countries. So I think that would be something that would be quite relevant for, for them this year. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to repeat the question again. There are many overseas students at DeMontford University all requiring different treatments. How are you going to ensure that they are getting the most out of their primary reason for them being here, their education? Caitlin, over to you. Um, I think it's imperative we realise that some of these students have cultural barriers that we don't necessarily realise. So there's a lot of them who aren't on social media for religious reasons. So it's making sure we know our audience and we're talking to them in the way that's going to be most effective. After all, they can educate us too. And finally, to Mahad. Um, well, there should be reps that communicating with them all, all the time. Emails, Twitter, Facebook. Distant learners currently get, the, uh, get access with them on, through Skype. So they talk through Skype, uh, could relay their problems, any difficulties they have. That's how, I to, that's how I would do it. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've had a question tweeted in. Do remember, if you want to tweet a question, it's at DemonFM, or you can text in on 60300, starting with the word demon. This question comes in, there seems to be a divide when it comes to Wednesday timetables and sports teams playing their games. How will you resolve this? Mahad first. Uh, they have that problem uh, Wednesday afternoons. Students could talk to their uh, faculty, um, faculty coordinators. Some students I know in my course are on certain sports teams that they play on Wednesdays and they could reschedule their lessons. And uh, yeah, um, the activities office is already thinking about uh, getting Wednesday's afternoons off anyway. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, and we're going over to Thomas next. Uh, do you want to repeat the question? Could you repeat the question? Yeah, of course. I didn't quite hear it. Um, there seems to be a divide when it comes to Wednesday timetables and sports teams playing their games. How will you resolve this? Um, well, I'm not really that involved with sports teams, <laughs> to be honest, but um, I definitely would like to work with people who are. Um, more knowledgeable on the situation. I wouldn't feel comfortable commenting on something, to be, uh, to be honest, that I'm not fully aware of. But that doesn't mean that I can't be made aware of these things. It just means that I don't feel comfortable commenting on it right now. No problem. Uh, and we're going to Caitlin next. Caitlin, the question again. There seems to be a divide when it comes to Wednesday timetables and sports teams playing their games. How will you resolve this? Okay, so we've now got about 90% of our students who don't have timetabled activities on a Wednesday afternoon. There are some who are left over, and these tend to be the students on the professional accreditation courses. So we need to work with these professional bodies to ensure that the students can still meet the professional requirements and have the Wednesdays to play sport. Okay, thank you. Uh, and finally, we're going to Alison. That um, question. There seems to be a divide when it comes to Wednesday timetables and sports teams playing their games. How will you resolve this? Uh, get all the timetables to, to match so that Wednesday afternoons are free for those who wish to do sports and other non-sport related activities too. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions from the floor, do raise your hand. Someone will come over to you with a microphone and you can ask that question live on Demon FM. I do remind you though, if anyone does want to ask a question, please do not swear you are live speaking to the City of Leicester right now. <laughs> 